This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. During the 1980s, amid the peak of the Cold War's technology race, a series of peculiar deaths among scientists working in Britain's defense industry began to baffle investigators. Most of the victims were research staff of Marconi Electronic Systems, with the majority being computer scientists working on defense projects associated with U.S. Strategic Defense Initiative research and development. Furthermore, many of these deaths were under bizarre circumstances, with their underlying cause ruled as undeterminable. Others were declared as suicides or accidents, despite overwhelming, contradictory evidence. The mystery began in March of 1982 with the death of senior computer scientist Dr. Keith Bowden, a contractor for GEC Marconi. Bowden had driven his car off a bridge, down an embankment, and into an abandoned rail yard, dying instantly. It was initially concluded by police that Bowden was simply drunk and driving recklessly. However, witness testimony from friends who were with Bowden that night denied he had ever been drinking. Upon further investigation of the wreckage, it was soon determined that the tires in Bowden's car that were known to be relatively new had been swapped with a set that was old and worn. No explanation for this was ever discovered. The next mysterious death would occur in 1985, when radar engineer Roger Hill was found dead in his home, seemingly from a self-inflicted shotgun wound. Though no evidence of Hill ever owning a shotgun could be found, the coroner ultimately declared Hill's death as a suspicious death with no specific cause or an open verdict. The next year, Marconi employee, 24-year-old computer engineer Vamal Dajabe, would also die under mysterious circumstances. Dodger Bay had jumped off the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol in an apparent suicide. However, his body was recovered with his pants around his ankles and a needle-sized puncture wound was found on his buttocks. The Bristol coroner similarly concluded the death was suspicious with no identifiable cause. At the time of his death, Dodger Bay had been working on computer control systems for advanced torpedo homing at Marconi. Two months after Dajabai's death, another Marconi computer scientist, 26-year-old Ashad Sharif, would turn up dead, once again in Bristol. Sharif's death was a particularly bizarre case, as he was found to have decapitated himself using his car and a rope tied between his neck and a tree. At the scene of the incident, a metal rod was found on the floor of the car next to the accelerator pedal. Sharif was working on satellite guidance systems at the time of his death. Both Dajabai and Sharif did not live or work in Bristol, and the coroner had noted that both suspicious deaths were connected by both men being associated with a top secret project at Marconi that would later be identified as an underwater munitions guidance system known as Project Cosmos. While incredibly suspicious, no significant connection was made by these three deaths until 1987, when the pace of these mysteries massively increased. That year, Richard Pugh, another computer scientist and a consultant to the Ministry of Defense, was found at his home with his feet bound, a plastic bag on his head, and a thick rope coiled around his body. His death was concluded as an accident by the coroner due to sexual misadventure. A few days later, Dr. John Britton, another scientist associated with the classified projects of the Ministry of Defense, was found dead in his own garage of carbon monoxide poisoning. This death was ruled a suicide. Five weeks later, Marconi engineer David Skews was also found dead of carbon monoxide poisoning. Bizarrely, his car was found modified with a pipe that connected its exhaust to the vehicle's cabin. The next year, two more deaths would turn up, with defense engineer Victor Moore dying from an unknown drug overdose, and scientist Peter Pipel also succumbing to carbon monoxide poisoning. Pipel, in particular, was found by his wife with his body jammed underneath his car in his garage, with his mouth next to the exhaust pipe. Weeks later, another scientist, John Whiteman, was found dead in his bathtub, surrounded by pills and empty alcohol bottles though the autopsy revealed no traces of drugs or alcohol in his body. Shortly after, senior radar scientist David Sand was killed when he made a sudden U-turn in his car and crashed at high speed into an empty cafe. His vehicle was found to be inexplicably loaded up with cans of gasoline, causing the car to be completely consumed by flames. 
Next came 24-year-old engineer Mark Wisner, who was found dead with his head in a plastic bag, similar to Richard Pugh. In 1988, lab technician 23-year-old Russell Smith was found dead after jumping off a cliff in Cornwall. And another Marconi senior computer scientist, Trevor Knight, was found dead by carbon monoxide poisoning. By August, two senior figures at Marconi succumbed to some of the most suspicious of all the deaths. 50-year-old computer engineer Alistair Beckham, who had been leading several programs for the United States Strategic Defense Initiative, was found dead of an apparent suicide after some light Sunday afternoon gardening at his home. Beckham was found in his shed with wires attached to his chest that were connected to a live outlet. His mouth was jammed with a handkerchief. Beckham's wife, unconvinced of her husband's suicide, described him as highly secretive of his work and gave an account of agents from the Ministry of Defense arriving at their home just hours after his death to remove several documents. Shortly after Beckham's mysterious death, Marconi director John Ferry was also found dead by electrocution after stripped wires that were connected to a live outlet was found jammed into his teeth fillings. By 1989, the press had published several stories alluding to a KGB plot to systematically assassinate key defense scientists. This was further substantiated by the occurrence of several deaths in 1987 and 1988 of key personnel of both subcontracted and acquired companies that were associated with top-secret Marconi projects. Despite calls for an inquiry into these clusters of mysterious suicides, violent deaths, and murders by several members of parliament and trade union leaders, the government had dismissed the deaths as coincidences exacerbated by high levels of stress within the defense industry. At the peak of these deaths, Professor Colin Pritchard, a foundation professor of social work studies at the University of Southampton, an expert in mental illness and suicides, had conducted his own investigation, leading to the conclusion that many of the deaths were statistically uncommon for work-based stress. Pritchard had noted several odd connections between some of the men in his research, with a small group all complaining to friends and family that they had been tasked strange, impossible, and unscientific tasks by their employers. Furthermore, all were employed up until the day of their deaths, and none had shown any signs of mental illness or other disturbance. Many of the deaths had even followed directly after an expressed intention to leave their position at Marconi. Both Pritchard and other news outlets had also cited the overwhelming use of sexual misadventure as a cause of death. Such a presentation is a common method of disguising murder in the world of espionage, appearing within the training of almost every major intelligence agency. Its popularity not only lends itself to disguising the actual method of death, but it also diminishes the victim's reputation, diverting momentum from any subsequent investigation. While the Marconi deaths grab the headlines, it was also accompanied by other suspicious deaths throughout the defense industry of Europe. In 1986, several West German scientists working on projects tied to the Strategic Defense Initiative were also found dead under mysterious circumstances. That July, Karl Heinz Beckerts, a director at Siemens and a key Strategic Defense Initiative contractor, was killed by a car bomb in Munich. A few months later, Gerald von Brummel, a senior advisor in Strategic Defense Initiative negotiations, was found with an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Smaller firms throughout Germany, Sweden, and Italy had all reported staff that had vanished throughout the late 1980s, all of which had been involved either directly or peripherally in the Strategic Defense Initiative program and its related projects. By 1990, over 25 cases would be connected and documented by the media. Among them, UK's Computer Weekly correspondent Tori Collins would file a series of noteworthy stories investigating the deaths. In 1990, Collins would go on to publish his book, Open Verdict, chronicling the series of deaths and the suspicious anecdotal evidence that tied them together. However, despite the overwhelming evidence of a clandestine plot to hinder the UK's defense industry, no firm conclusions as to its true nature was ever uncovered. Solving a good mystery always starts with following the logic, and with Brilliant, building these critical thinking skills has never been easier. Brilliant is my go-to tool for diving headfirst into learning a new concept. It's a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving. Because to truly learn something, it takes more than just watching it. You have to experience it. 
With this in mind, Brilliant has been tirelessly revamping their courses to introduce even more interactivity, and with their recently updated Logic course, you'll be able to learn how to use limited information to make predictions, eliminating the impossible to uncover the truth. In this course, you'll be able to spot logical fallacies, navigate some strategic game theory, understand machine logic, and use the symbolic languages of logic to understand fun riddles, all through engaging, interactive exercises that let you experience these principles firsthand. With Brilliant, you learn in-depth and at your own pace. It's not about memorizing or regurgitating facts. You simply pick a course you're interested in and get started. If you feel stuck or made a mistake, an explanation is always available to help you through the learning process. If you'd like to try out Brilliant and start learning STEM for free, click the link in the description below or visit brilliant.org forward slash newmind and the first 200 of you will get 20% off an annual premium subscription.